Hello everybody, it's so good to see you all. Um, do not be confused by the fact that this broadcast is happening on a Tuesday. <laughs> it's um, one of those, what we like to call special broadcasts, you know, when God gives me kind of a specific word that doesn't necessarily fit in with the the seasons or the messages that he's been giving me um, up until then because it's often specifically regarding something and then I tend to prefer to release those on a Tuesday so that they stand out from the normal prophetic teachings on the Thursday. So that's what we're doing today, this Tuesday. And um, just welcome everybody back. I, or for all of you making the effort to watch this Tuesday, I so appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for all of you who now think that today is Thursday, it isn't. <laughs> but I will see you on Thursday again, so don't forget. Um, the word actually that I felt God... <laughs> You know, it's one of those things. Okay, so it's November 2020, and we are heading forward into, obviously, the end of 2020, the beginning of 2021. And so from roundabout now until the end of 2020, you're going to get various prophetic voices releasing various words for 2021 and all of that kind of thing. And I actually just felt like God has been speaking to me about... 2021 but like kind of about the time to come or the seasons ahead and I wanted to just release it and get it out there before all the other messages start coming through for myself you know because sometimes if I listen to too many other people I get confused by what about what I'm hearing from the Lord so I thought let me just put this out there let's just let everybody um, who listens to me hear it and um, and prepare ourselves for for what is coming and you know I know that everyone it cannot wait for 2020 to be over, okay? It's been an in incredibly um, new year. We've been through experiences and things that we've never experienced before. We, you know, things have happened and crises and pandemics and things, you know, that, I mean, it's it's been a, a really difficult year for most people. It's been a difficult year for everyone in some way or other, you know, even the people who have actually thought, no, you know, not too bad, managed lockdown and all of that kind of thing. They've, there have been difficulties associated with the, this year. So there's this thing of, oh, let it be over, let us move into the next year. And all always this kind of um, optimistic view of um, that, uh, you know, 12 o'clock on the 31st of December 2020, everything will change and we'll wake up on the 1st of January 2021 to a whole uh, new world. And that's not necessarily the way it's going to be. But um, there is always, God always has so much to say at these, when these season changes and year changes. And he, you know, is not caught by surprise and he's not worried and he's not, you know, in heaven wringing his hands, wondering how he's going to cope with the rest of time. He knows exactly what is happening and he has a plan and that plan includes you. And in order for you to be a part of that plan, it's always a good idea to have some understanding of what that plan looks like so that we can prepare ourselves ourselves. So for a few months now, like not just recently, for literally for a few months now, every time I've thought of next year, you know, in any way, just planning ahead or looking at, you know, what my boys are going to be doing next year or anything like that, any time I've thought of next year, the words that God drops into my spirit are, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> That's like just that. In inverted commas, those are the words that he drops in my spirit. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and I kept hearing this over and over again. And as as I say, it's for months now. Just you know, as as you know, we've sort of looked at our life going forward. I keep hearing those words. Eventually, I sat down with them and I said, "Okay, Lord, I I know you're trying to say something. Um, please, you know, speak a bit more clearly and explain to me what it is that you're saying." And so, whilst I've, I've been having those conversations with him, I've just went back and had a look. At, for example, what the phrase hindsight is 2020 means. Now, obviously, when I when I saw that phrase in my mind, it was hindsight is 2020. 2020 written like 2020, the year 2020. The actual phrase is hindsight is 20 forward slash 20 because it refers to 2020 vision. Okay, and 2020 vision means good eyesight and it means to see things clearly. So the phrase means that it is often only when we look back that we see things clearly. 
And I felt God saying, you know, that we need to be prepared to look back at 2020. That's another reason why I wanted to release this word now, to give us time between now and the end of this year, to actually go back, look back over the year at everything in all its, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, look back at the year of 2020 and, and ask God to give you clarity on some of the things that have transpired in 2020 that, you know, we don't want to just go back to normal. We don't want this pandemic to end and, and you know, everything to open up and we just go back to normal. Normal was overrated. And normal, the way we experience normal will never happen again. We are in a new world. It is a new normal. And, and we need to adapt to that new normal. And I think that there's a something to be said for looking back over the year and decide, you know, what was good? What was bad? What was downright ugly? You know, be transparent with the Lord. He knows it all anyway. Be authentic with him and let him show you, you know, what is it that was good about what happened in 2020 that caused you to structure your life differently or do things differently that you get to say, yes, I'm going to take that forward with me. And then what are the things where it's like, no, you know what? We're actually going to leave those things behind. We're not going to try to resurrect them when normal comes back again. We're not going to do that. We're just, we're actually going to leave them behind. And then, you know, the downright ugly, just the stuff that when we're stressed and under pressure and the world seems to be going to hell in a handbasket, the things that we do or say or think that are not necessarily reflective of the character of Jesus or the God that we serve, you know, maybe they're just things we need to go back and just repent for. You know, we just got to be like, Lord, like, forgive me. I just, I didn't deal with that very well. And um, just forgive me. Like, let's just get that all behind us before we move forward, you know. So that, that's the one thing. And then the other thing was God got me to go back and revisit all the things that I had written down for the end of 2019. And he was basically saying, said he go back, look back and take those things that I gave you at the end of 2019 and delve deeper into them. So the word and um, at the beginning of this year of 2020, you know, obviously because it's 2020, everyone, you know, was the, the main sort of thrust of the prophetic words that went out with that went out. They were largely to do with vision and which is uh, I agree with that. Absolutely. Um and it was kind of, you know, because we're in the decade um, of the, the mouth, you know, the Hebrew word pay, which means mouth, uh, we, get to, we get to see clearly and then speak, you know. So we see what God is doing and we speak it out, we speak it into existence. But for me personally, and the word that I uh, preached actually at the end of last year was focus. And that word... <laughs> became so evidently true in what happened from March this year. You know, there was one had to focus because there were so many things that were just removed, you know, when we were locked down inside our houses, basically, and, you know, no one could go anywhere, no one could see anyone. What else was there to do but focus on and you could have chosen what you focused on. And I've released lots of words about choosing faith and focusing on, you know, what you can choose to focus on. But God told me to go back and have another look at the, the origin of the word focus. And it's absolutely incredible. When I looked it up, the origin of focus is actually, it comes from a Latin word. And what you had was you had old Latin and then you had new Latin. So there were words in old Latin that meant, meant a certain thing. And then the, then people, scholars, took those words and brought them into what they called new Latin, where they, they kind of, they, their meaning evolved. So in the old Latin, the origin of the word focus comes from the words for hearth, fireplace, fire, and flame. That is where focus comes from. Fireplace, fire, flame. I mean, just thinking about that literally makes <laughs> my spirit burns inside me. It's like I, I feel myself just get on fire for Jesus, just thinking about that. And then the new Latin use was introduced in Latin text 
um, about astronomy. In 1604, so the word has been around for a long time, in 1604, Johann Kepler used the word focus because it meant fire, flame, etc. He used it with reference to the burning point at which heat rays meet of a lens or mirror. So you know when you when you were young and you hold a piece of glass or a mirror in the, reflect the rays of the sun to try and start a fire. <laughs> he used that same word focus that that meant fire, flame, fireplace in that context in the in the astronomical context about referencing the burning point at which heat rays meet like of a lens or mirror. So the, so the point at which the sun's rays hit the mirror at that point that actually causes a flame, that is what focus was used for then. It was then, from then, the, the, the meaning moved on to mean center or central point, a condition in which something can be clearly apprehended or perceived. In geology, it is the point of origin of an earthquake. It all brings us back to focus on the one thing that is the main thing, that is the only thing that matters in all of this, which is Jesus. I just think that if we could bring our lives down to focus on that point where the fire of the Holy Spirit hits the reflection of our life and we catch a light and burn for Jesus. That is, I want to live in that space. I want to live in that point. And that is the word that God has given me for next year. It is, it is that the focus that has happened over this year is going to be even more intense, even more, and I'm not talking about more pandemics or more lockdowns or anything like that. I'm, I'm talking about us with God, that that is what he's looking for in this year to come, in this season to come, is that absolute minute focus where his spirit hits the reflection of your life and you burn for Jesus to live in that center central point. That needs to be the focus for 2021. So, you know, we go back and we look at 2020, we weed out the good, the bad, the ugly, we sit with the Lord and we decide what we take in with us, what we leave leaving behind. And then we do what Philippians 3 verse 13 says, which it says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. And the two things I want to pull out, and that's um, trans that from the Passion Translation, the two things that I want to pull out of there is that I have one compelling focus because actually we can only focus on one thing at a time. If you look at the meaning of the word focus, if you look at, at what, where it comes from and what it means, it is, you can only focus on one thing at a time. So focus is the one thing. But the other thing is where it says there, as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Who is the future? God is the future. God is the past. God is the present. God is the future. The, that phrase, fasten my heart, speaks to me of intimacy. It speaks to me of, the in, of an intimate relationship with God because you require an intimate relationship with God to go over, to look at 2020 through his eyes and actually be prepared to acknowledge the things that were good and bad and ugly. So focus and intimacy are going to be huge words for, for this next year, for this next season. But this word has been released now in November, but the point is not that we now shut down here and sort of move on to, you know, no, that's another thing that God has really been speaking to me now about. You know, we're in a time period right now of acceleration. This God, it doesn't bother God that there's November and December, and then it's the end of the year. He's not bound by the fact that 2020 ends in a short while. And, you know, he's not rushing to accomplish what he can accomplish um, before the end, you know, before midnight on the 31st of December. He doesn't work like that. He's not bound by that. And he doesn't take a holiday. 
you know, and um, and as much as God doesn't take a holiday, neither does the enemy. And I want to just encourage you to finish strong. It's the same word that I brought at the end of last year, but there's almost more of an urgency to it this year. We need to finish strong. You know, everyone is tired. People are tired. It's been a difficult year. You know, stuff has happened. People are stressed. People are drained. People don't know whether to fear for the future or to have faith for the future. I'm telling you that if you're a believer and you've got Jesus, you have faith for the future because there is always hope. There is always faith. But we do not stop because we're nearing the end of the year. Yes, it may be holiday season. Absolutely. But as believers, as a body, we cannot let our God down now in as much as God has plans for the next year and all the years after that, so does the enemy. And in as much as we do not focus on what the enemy is doing, we focus on what God is doing. We also are aware of the fact that we fight a war and a war cannot be fought if you don't know what the enemy's plans are going to be. And there's just I felt God say that over these next couple of months, it is more important than ever for us to pray and prophesy and intercede for our nation, for South Africa particularly. I'm speaking about to South Africans now, for South Africans particularly. And whatever other nation you're from that you're watching this, take it for your nation. But I clearly heard God say, pray, prophesy, intercede for our nation over these next couple of months don't get watchmen. Do not step down from the wall. Do not move out of the gap. If anything, we need more people to stand in the gap over the next few months than we ever have, will have needed before. And two of the things that I specifically felt God say to me was I heard him speak to me about shalom. Now, you know, we tend to, you know, we pray shalom over people because we understand it meaning peace and it absolutely does mean peace and it means the peace of Jesus. But the meaning, the, the meaning contained within the word shalom, from the meaning of shalom, which is contained within the Hebrew letters or the pictographs that make up that word, is to destroy the authority that binds us to chaos. That is the actual meaning of the Hebrew letters that make up the word shalom, to destroy the authority that binds us to chaos. So when you are speaking shalom or declaring shalom over your family, your community, your house, your, your neighborhood, your country, whatever it is, you're not just decreeing peace, some kind of fluffy candy floss peace, you know, um, you are actually stepping up and destroying the authority that binds us to chaos. And there are two specific spaces or places that God laid on my heart that we need to pray, prophesy and intercede to destroy the authority that binds us to chaos over the next couple of months in this nation, our nation, South Africa. And the one is on our roads. We need to speak shalom over our roads all of our roads, in all of our names, wherever you live within South Africa, whatever province you're from, whatever region you're in, go out when you're driving along, speak shalom over our roads. It, it, I get the sense that the enemy has a plan for such evil in terms of just carnage on the roads over this holiday season. And we as the body of believers get to stand up and say, no, no, actually, we are going to speak over that and that is not going to happen. And then the other area, which we all know that we desperately need, is we need to decree and declare shalom uh, between races, cultures, and political parties over this holiday season. In every area of our nation, we need to be speaking the shalom peace that destroys the authority that binds us to chaos over racial differences over the, the our different cultures, over everything where the enemy is seeking to ramp up the violence and ramp up the, the, the um, division and, you know, bring about more and more disunity and more and more racial divide. We, as the body of believers, we as women, as warrior women in this army that God is raising up, we need to be the ones to speak into that. 
You know, um, some of you might remember, but when South Africa, when apartheid um, ended in South Africa in 1994, uh, there were there were international prophets who who released prophecies that were absolutely, incredibly, fear-filled. Just just. Yeah, they released prophecies about, you know, the streets running red with blood and just the most horrendous prophecies. And those prophecies went out. They filled so many Christians with such fear. But what happened? Believers got down on their knees. They were like this, because those prophecies, they're not supposed to fill you with fear. They're supposed to warn you. They're supposed to be like, you know what, this is what could happen. But we have a God who wants to co-labor with us and prevent these things from happening. And he, what we needed then as a church is exactly what happened. The church went on its knees, prayed, repented, interceded, prophesied, and those prophecies didn't come into fulfillment the way it had seemed that they would. And for us, you know, for, for people out there who, who consistently say things, we're going to land up like, you know, Zimbabwe, we're going to, you know, it, we, we don't live in denial of the nation we're living, of the problems we face. But at the same time, we speak the promises of God over South Africa. And those are not God's promises. We need to speak out what we see God show us about our nation. Not what's in the natural, but what God shows us in the spiritual. So I would encourage you over these next, this next month and a bit, going into 2021, and don't stop there. November, December, January, February, pray, prophesy, intercede, decree and declare shalom, but specifically focus on the roads and the, the racial divide and the violence that springs up from all of that. And let's seek the Lord. If there's repentance that needs to be done, let's repent. If there's forgiveness that needs to be offered, let's forgive. Whatever it is that we need to do as believers, let us do that. And let us destroy the authority that binds us to chaos. A few other things that God showed me is that next year um, will be a year of grace. There's always grace. Love, mercy, and grace are in abundance, and they are going to flow forth from him in the year to come. I, I also, and I've been saying this for the last, I don't know, two years, but this is how God works. It is time, it is time, it is time, it is time. And um, there is a, we are in a, a season, a, um, kind of an overarching season of preparing the bride, okay? We don't know how long we're going to be preparing the bride for, but this is a, there is a season of preparing the bride. But I felt God say that within the season of preparing the bride, there are other, you know, kind of um, um, seasons or times, the word season is so overused, but, you know, times that fit within that time. And the one that he told me is, and I don't know that it's just for next year. I think it's actually almost an era that, that we have we are at, at the beginning of, we have might have stepped in a little bit and we're going to step into it further, is the time or the season to prepare the way. We, are, we need to prepare the way for the coming of the King. It is a John the Baptist era. It is a, there is a, there are John the Baptist, there is a John the Baptist mantle, a John the Baptist anointing over this time in history. And we need to prepare the way for the coming of the King. And it is time it is time now. There is an urgency. There's not a, it's, we don't wait any longer. We do it now. And then just some of the other things that he said to me um, about, about next year, particularly, he said that um, there is, a, you know, we need to be prepared for warfare. We need to be prepared for trial. We, it's a time when we get to assess and decide, where we get to actually, you know, it's, there's that saying that says, if you don't stand for if you don't stand for any if you stand for nothing you will fall for anything it is the time to nail our colors to the mast to be like okay you know what this is the side i'm on and this is what that looks like the time for double mindedness and being swayed here and there and thrown about by the waves and blown about by the wind those days are over it is time to assess and decide it is a time of accountability and responsibility and from all of that comes reward comes mature unity 
And it is a time for purity of heart. And I've spoken on this so many times, consecration, holiness, righteousness, purity of heart, and also a time to be expectant of God, to expect God to move, to expect him to show up, to expect him as we step into these things, he steps forward. You know, he doesn't meet you halfway. He, he does comes more than halfway. So those are some of the things that, that I feel that God has shown me for next year and um, taking us probably into the years to come as well. And I just trust that some of those things will resonate with you that, you, that some of those things will be things that God has been speaking to you about. I would encourage you to sit with God yourself and get your own word from him for what is to come. You know, don't rely purely on, on other prophetic voices. Ask God for a word for you, for your family. And and let us let us finish strong. Let us finish this year strong. And and step into the future with faith that God holds it and us in the palm of his hands. If you're unclear about anything I've said, if you're concerned about anything I've said, if you want to question, if you want to tell me you agree, you disagree, whatever the case may be, please reach out to me. WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook message, email, website, contact, whatever the case may be, reach out to me and I would love to chat with you. So thank you for listening. Don't forget to, to tune in again on Thursday. Today is Tuesday <laughs> on Thursday and, um, and I will see you then. Thank you so much. Love you all. Bye.